solutions for quiz 7, Math 243. Uh, your statistics teacher claims that he can affect it. Affect is a key word here. This is telling us it's going to be a two-tailed test. The total points in a basketball game by watching it. Supporters claim. He points out that on average this season, there were 190 points scored per game. But in the 100 games he watched, there were 194 points scored per game. Suppose that I somehow know that the standard deviation of points scored per game is 23. This right here is my sigma. Um, 190, okay, so we watched 100 games, so this is N. In those 100 games, there were 194 points scored on average, so this is X bar. Um, but in all games, there were 190 points, so mu naught is 190. And mu, let's see, maybe I'll write this down here. Mu is the um, the average points scored in all games that I would watch in all games. So we're talking about a population parameter here that I would watch. So I'm wording that kind of awkwardly, but what I mean is not just these 100 games, but all games. If I watched, on average, any game that I watch, what that average should be. Um, state the null and alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that mu, the average points port scored per game in all games that I watch, is the exact same as mu naught. That is just 100, uh, 190. And the alternative hypothesis is that mu is not 190. Um, key point here that it's not equals to, not greater than, or maybe less than. We get that from this word here, effect. Um, and this is telling us that it's a two-tailed test. That's key. Um, describe what a type one error would be in this case and what a type two error would be in this case. All right, type one is falsely rejecting The null hypothesis, so that is concluding that watching does affect point scored when in fact it does not. And a type 2 error, it's kind of the flip of that. It's falsely, oops, falsely um, accepting the null hypothesis. That is concluding that watching does not affect I guess this should be effect, right? Effect uh, point scored when in fact it does. Something like that. Your words could be slightly different, but that idea. Calculate the test statistic. Okay, this is a Z test statistic because we know sigma. And the formula for it is something we've seen before, x bar minus mu naught divided by sigma over the square root of n. So plugging it in all the pieces, x bar was 194. Mu naught was 190. Sigma was 23. And n was 100. So this is 4 divided by, whoa. Don't drop your calculator. 4 divided by 2.3. Uh, 23, square root of 100 is 10. 23 over 10 is 2.3. So 4 divided by 2.3 is 1.74. We round it to two decimal places. Okay, so now we have our test statistic. What we do on our test statistic is, okay, so now, oh, this thing again. 
You may want to add a sentence to justify the shape of your sampling distribution um, because n is greater than or equal to 30. The sampling distribution is approximately normal. This is a little tedious to write all the time. We've seen this a bunch. Um, this is by the central limit theorem. I don't care if you tell me why this is true. All right, so now we want to draw our picture. So we have a 90% confidence level. Let me draw this picture here. Here's my sampling. Hard to draw. Distributions. So there's my sampling distribution, something like that. Um, and what's important here is we have a two-tailed test. So we're going to have two critical values and two rejection regions. So what I'm saying is we're going to have these two critical values over here and one rejection region out here and one rejection region out here. And the way we'll figure out our critical values is 90% confidence level means that alpha is equal to 0.10. So that means the total area in the rejection region is 0 0.10. So this is 5% and this is 5%. And the critical value that corresponds with 5% in each of the tables, tails from your Z tables is 1.645. Negative if it's on the left, positive if it's on the right. Um, you could look that up in tables, get something really close to that, or use your calculator or whatever. Um, and the key point here is that this test statistic, this 1.74, is bigger than 1.645. If you think about where this falls in our picture, it's, okay, this is not to scale because I want to emphasize that it's out here. But my test statistic is over here in the rejection region. So therefore, what my conclusion is, is maybe I'd say something like, because my test statistic of 1.74 falls in the rejection region there is sufficient there is sufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that, let's see, what were we talking about? Oh, affecting points per game. So we're going to conclude that our alternative hypothesis is right, that the average point scored in games that I watch is actually different from 190. That mm, me watching a game affects the amount of points scored. That might seem like a kind of stupid conclusion to make, um, and you know maybe it is, but uh, based on this test, that's what we conclude. So that's the end of this quiz.